Hello and welcome to Dwarf Fortress. I am Twisted Logic, and this video is about adamantine processing. And um, just as a warning, there's minor spoilers. If you enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments, and subscribe for more videos. So my miners just um, struck raw adamantine. Praise them! Ha 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 ha. Okay, so I'm going to just probe this vein um, at a few different Z levels, see what we can get it. The, yeah, so this is a warm, warm stone right here, so he's going to stop mining it. That's okay though, we're just going to see what we can get into over here. Um, because I want to start, I want to start tackling that uh, adamantine vein at the, um, from the top and then go down uh, because the way it um, oh, semi molten rock here. Okay, we're pretty far down. We've uh, dug very deep. Okay, so this right here, um, close that, cancel that. I gotta cancel. I just accidentally breached the. Um, Magma C here, so I have to cancel everything underneath this layer. Yeah, so all of this has to be canceled. Because it's gonna, that up downstairs is gonna start flooding. Since the, since I have a breach there now, um, I should probably close that up because in the magma sea creatures can exist there's magma crabs and um, I don't believe that I have any right now oh there are some magma crabs on the map here zoom to them they're not that big of a deal but um, there might be forgotten beasts that um, can come up through that I'm not entirely sure just gonna get back to where I was. So this area here, I, I, I set up for adamantine processing. So this stockpile, if I go into the settings of this, this is a stone stockpile, and I have everything disabled in other stone here. In the other stone, if I go to the bottom of this list, almost the bottom, raw adamantine is the only thing turned on. Um, we just dug this out, so. So I'll just smooth it out as well. Then I built two craft dwarfs workshops and a magma smelter, which is still being constructed, and a loom, which still is being constructed. So I went over in Dwarf Therapist and um, adjusted some of my labors. I selected two of the dwarfs, um, Nish and Nil. Nish and Nil, the only thing they're going to be doing is strand extracting. And if I go to this craft dwarf workshop here, and then press A to add new task, come down in this list to extract metal strands, press enter, and then repeat that, Alt W, add a limit, thread of any adamantine, press enter. I'm going to adjust the range of this. I'm just going to adjust the range of this um, to 1000 by 1001, we'll say. Uh, I don't think they'll hit that number, and and that's the reason why it's this high. So that way they keep doing it, but they're not going to they're not going to overdo it if if I ever get up that high. And then on this workshop here, I'm just going to do the same thing. Extract metal strands, repeat. So another thing that I have to do is go to O for orders and then shift W for workshop orders and then make sure auto loom is set to dyed thread only. So another thing that I'm going to do is go to the hospital and press I for zones and then move the selection box over top of the hospital zone and shift H for hospital information and then hold down shift and press 4 until this thread um, 
amount here is pretty low because what they're going to do is they're going to take the extracted metal strands as thread and try to use it in the hospital and you don't really want that to happening so I guess for right now maybe I'll just turn it to zero so shift and then four all the way down and I can I can go up and down this list with the arrow keys if I want to adjust anything else in the hospital so I'm gonna come back down here do a nine by nine here and then down a few and then on this level I'll see if I can come in this way So the adamantine um, vein is a vertical vein and usually it's um, hollow in the center. So I want to attempt to find the top of it and then channel through it. So I don't want to dig it too much until I find the top of it. Otherwise I may have to make like a um, temporary floors or something in there. Okay, so we got another warm stone here. So if I press D to dig, this flashing um, icon around the stone wall indicates that it's a warm stone, and usually there's there's magma on the other side of it. So it's uh, kind of a hard time digging around down here. I can dig through it, but I'll breach the um, magma wall and start getting a magma flood. So I'm gonna just set a hotkey right here, uh, F3, zoom. So in this stockpile here, um, they, all, they already started bringing some up. I'm gonna change the, I'm gonna press W, and then I'm gonna change the maximum wheelbarrows to 10. The way that the wheelbarrows work is that it's one wheelbarrow per dwarf. So if there's one wheelbarrow assigned to this stockpile, only one dwarf is gonna be working this stockpile. So I set it to 10, so we now have 10 dwarves working that to pull the stones up and down. I got nothing above it, so I think that this is the top of it. Although I have some warm stone down here, so I'm gonna see if I can strip mine this section. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. But what I'm going to do is um, dig a channel, just like this, and then just do this one section at a time. So I'll dig this line, and then if it's safe after that's complete, dig this line here, and then so on. And there's many ways that you could 
uh, go about tackling these adamantine veins. This is just uh, one method. The trick is finding them. Oh great, so yeah, so I have some more right here. Um, but I do have some wormstone there, so dig H. I'll try another another channel line right there. That should go there. There's, so there should be magma in this tile, but I'm not sure about anywhere else. So with the channel here, since they dug down into the, the rock below, because it's a channel, it, it automatically mines that adamantine, which is great. Oh great, so Nil, Nil here is um, extracting metal strands already. So I need to do a um, new stockpile. And this one's going to be, uh, I'm going to press H for cloth. And I'm just going to do maybe like half of this room right here. And then half of up here. And so I'm going to go into the settings of this. And I'm going to forbid everything except metal thread. And then another cloth stockpile near the loom. And this one I'm going to um, forbid everything that's not metal cloth. And then another stockpile that's a bar and block stockpile here. And the settings of this one. I'm going to forbid everything except for um, adamantine. So it looks like... Um, So I gotta go into the settings of this. I'm not sure where he's taking this. Vabok, I'm gonna follow him in a minute, but in this um, stockpile, I'm gonna press T to take from a pile or workshop, and then move the mouse selector over the craft dwarf and press enter, and then do the same for this one. Take from this workshop. Now I'm gonna just follow uh, Bob Bach here to see where he's taking this. Oh, okay. So I think he's taking it to my other cloth stockpile here. So for the settings of my other stockpile that's cloth, I'm just going to disable metal thread. So forbid that and forbid that. Cloth metal and thread metal. So after I have some of the adamantine strands extracted, then in the magma smelter, the make adamantine wafers option is gonna be selectable. So I'm gonna press enter on that and repeat, alt W, and then shift A to add a limit. Bars of any adamantine, press enter. And then the range of this, I'm gonna set um, I'll do 55 to 75 to start with. We're still waiting on the weaving shop here. So I want to make sure that they take a bunch of these um, stones out of here before I channel down over them because if I channel down over one of these stones the raw adamantine and there's magma underneath it and I'm gonna lose that um, stone to the magma and so I'm gonna not try not to do that by just um, going about this area pretty slowly with any time you dig down like this it um, you should have an area sort of like this where you transfer over and then we can build a bridge in there. So 
so we'll make a dorite bridge right there um, because they to get down to this level they have to cut over this and then continue down because I, I like to have airlocks in just you know if something something's down there that you don't know about then um, we can close off this bridge and then try to dig down a different way to access that same area okay so dig H oh okay so these are all warm here so maybe what I'll do is I'll just test it right there and then get this half so I'm going to test and see if there's magma underneath there and then do this half here Okay, so there doesn't seem to be magma there. Even though it's warm, so maybe the magma's underneath. Oh yeah, okay. So the magma's underneath and you can see the rest of the vein here. So it should be fine then. We're just gonna try to dig the whole area here. And um... To get some of this magma out of the way, see it goes down more as well. Dig a pathway for water, and then from the surface, from the stream on the surface, all the way down to this area, and then in some controlled way flood out this area with water to cool it off and the magma will turn into obsidian and then we can mine through the obsidian and get to the rest of this adamantine here and here we may have to i'm not going to do that in this episode because that's going to take a very long time to set up for me um, however that's how you do that you would you would somehow pretty easily channel water down and then make sure you put in a floodgate or um, some kind of control method in that system somewhere and then just start so maybe like right here you just pop a few holes in this section here so I'd pop one here designations H put a hole there is that the area yeah Move it over one. And then after all this valuable stone is collected, so I, I can actually dig through this right here too. So after all this valuable stone is collected, and you put in doors for flood control, because you don't want to flood your stairways, um, then we could, then you could dig some kind of irrigation system and then flood this out with a couple holes in, maybe another hole right here. Because what you want to do is, um, the holes are going to plug themselves. So you bring in water into this area. And the magma is going to turn into obsidian rock. So, you should be able to dig stairs like right here. J for a downstairs. So we should be able to dig a downstairs here and then a upstairs here and then access some more of this area. Because the vein, it's exposed right there, but it may, there may be some of it behind this. So what I'm doing is just staying away from the warm stone a little bit so we'll see how this is upstairs 
so he cancelled the upstairs because all of this is warm stone underneath. Just cancelled again upstairs. So you So they're gonna cancel the, the mining job because of the warm stone, but then if you tell them to dig it, then they're gonna know that it's okay to dig that area if you tell them to if you designate it for digging a second time. So it's a little bit of a slow process, because every time they encounter Warmstone, the digging designation canceled, Warmstone located, it's going to pause the game. You can, you can go into a certain area of the Dwarf Fortress file system and modify what auto-pauses the game and what doesn't, and sometimes I'll turn that off. And I'll do another episode on that. Okay, so now we have our loom constructed finally. And I'm gonna press A to add a new task. And then it is A, weave metal cloth. Weave thread into cloth and then repeat. So lowercase r and then alt W, shift A. Cloth of any rock range of this will set to uh, 45 to 100. So I'm over here on the Dwarf Fortress wiki page on the metal tab and I'm gonna go to the bottom of this list to preliminary combat testing and analysis And this is going to tell us that edge weapons and armor for adamantine and steel tick the first and second place respectively. In the table here, the best armor is adamantine, the best edged weapons are adamantine, and the worst blunt weapons are adamantine. The ammunition has adamantine at good here, and there's a note here that says adamantine bolts deflect off adamantine armor but otherwise their performance is on par with bolts made out of other metals. So a decent amount of time has passed and most of the raw adamantine is up from the depths. We have two dedicated workshops and two dedicated strand extractors. Then the looms are turning it into adamantine cloth and the magma smelter is turning it into adamantine wafers. And the next step into processing these into useful items is going to take place at the Magma Forge. So I set up three. Um, in the first one, I'm going to add a new task and select weapons and ammunition. Go down in the list to adamantine. And then spear, short sword, and battle axe. And repeat all three of these. And I'll set up the workflows a little later for these. Um, you can really do whatever workflows you want. In the next Magma Forge, I'm going to add a new task and go to Armor and select Adamantine. And this is going to be Mail Shirt, Breastplate, Greaves, Helmet, Gauntlets, High Boots, and Shield. And then all of these on repeat. And you can set whatever workflows you want, add a new task, and come down to metal clothing here. And then this one, tunic, repeat, cloak, repeat, trousers, hood, gloves. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck finding your adamantine, and subscribe for more videos.